Loose lips sink ships. A couple hours before tip-off, Shams announces, oh, GP2 is the fifth starter for the Warriors tonight. Steve Kerr kind of indicating, hey, man, where are these leaks coming from? It started with the pool Draymond tape, right? Like, it's just kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, that was the story, I guess, headed into it. Who would be the elusive fifth starter for the Warriors in this game four? And it was GP2. And you made a couple assumptions when you heard that, right? One, all right, they're going to put him on d Try to get d up out of there, who was ineffective and not really a part of this game, right? And then I think a lot of us also assume, like, all right, maybe he's Steph's pick-and-roll partner. Talked about the switch of Vando onto Draymond and and trying to discourage um, this high pick and roll game with Steph Curry that's been so successful. And sure enough, he was the pick and roll partner. And you just saw how effective he is, the littlest big man in the league. He's got to be our third best screen setter after Draymond and Looney, right? He sets it wide. He sticks it. He has timing. And then something else that's underrated when you look at GP2 is he always knows where he is on the roll. And that sounds simple, but it's really not. Like when you roll and you have your back to the basket or you're turned around to catch a pass, he catches it and he always knows where he's at. He always uses the other side of the rim as protection from the shot blockers, great hands, you know, and that's why he's been able to compensate for his lack of verticality. He's still finishing very well, right? And you saw that to start the game. You probably also saw him throw up in his mouth and run to the locker room mid game, right? Live game. And didn't this happen late in the Sacramento series, right? He had food poisoning like two weeks ago. And so it just begs the question, like GP, he should know better in the sense of his father, right? Senior, Gary Payton Sr. Like GP, maybe you don't want to go eating at a taco truck in LA during the Lakers playoff matchup, right? I'm not saying he did, but you know my point. Like you got to be careful with those things because that this has happened throughout the history of the league. Guys getting sick on the road in the playoffs, like you got to be careful what you're eating. Um, So he battled through that, you know, the entire game and perhaps was a reason why he wasn't on the floor to end the game. So a very successful first half. The score was tight, but the Warriors, it felt like they were having success and they were in control. You saw AD being pulled up into that high pick and roll as he was trying to hide on GP2. And AD at this point in his career, he's not really comfortable, it seems like, defending above the three-point line. As good of a defender as he is, right, as he's aged and he's gotten heavier, um, I don't think he's as mobile out on the perimeter as he once was. And you saw Steph just cutting him up. You're just cutting him up, right? And it's funny because, you know, what was it, a career high, playoff career high, 14 assists? That's what it looks like when plan A is to to make the pass and and, and get others involved in score right and and I'm, that's not a knock on Steph but it's just an example of listen you don't you don't become the most prolific shooter of all time coming down the court and hunting assists and looking for guys it just doesn't work that way you have to have your shot in mind in order to be a shooter like Steph or Clay right but you saw his mindset flipped really in that game three and he kept that same energy in this game four and you know again a near triple double at the half second half Darvin Ham goes, all right, let's put LeBron on Draymond and we'll have LeBron come up in these pick and rolls, essentially. Let's, you know, they they just keep switching the matchups, essentially, to change who we're going to put in the screen action. Now, a lot of people were upset that they felt like there wasn't enough pick and roll. They didn't stick to the script as far as that high pick and roll. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of mentality. Going back and watching the tape this morning... That's not really true. They they continued to run the pick and rolls, but again, it was Steph's screen partner that was different, and it was LeBron on the switches and up, and that one, it kept AD down in the paint, and also you saw LeBron's familiarity with Steph, right, and understanding he wants to shoot moving to his left, and also basically saying, bro, you're, I'm not giving you space. Because what you see is with a lot of bigger defenders when they switch on Steph, they're like, they try to gap him a little bit, right? They're like, I, we, I don't want you to go around me, but I still have to contest. And they try to play that game with Steph. LeBron wasn't playing that. He was like, listen, I'm on you. Like, you can go around me. I got AD behind me, I, but you're not getting this off, right? But I thought the other element of the second half was 
they were trying to get Clay involved, right? He had a very quiet first half. And, you know, I proposed this in the breakdown. I had a, a very thorough breakdown. You can go check right now on my Patreon. Link is in the description. Um, some of it is like, listen, we can't ask Steph to do all the lifting, right? We got to get Clay involved. Some of it is also probably ego, right? And so they went into the split action and they tried to get Clay involved a little bit. And now you've got Draymond coming up and setting these screens. And, you know, it, it, it chicken or an egg. Cause it's like, listen, a lot of you, like, sometimes I feel like Draymond is always the screener because his ego, because that's what it is. And Hey, the success, it is what it is. They're, they're like one of the greatest picking roll duos of all time. So you can't really argue that, but some of it also is the spacing, right? How do you deal with Draymond's lack of spacing? Will you make him the screener? Right. And so again, LeBron is up in this action and it kind of mucked up what they were doing in that first half. I said it last week. I was like, Hey, put wigs in the pick and roll. We need some vertical spacing because listen, I agree. AD was getting picked on out there, but I think we underestimate how much a vertical spacer or a guy that rolls to the rim with intent helps Steph in the pick and roll game, right? And in Looney and Draymond, they're just that they're not that. We know that GP is really the only guy that rolls with intent as a threat. Kaminga's that other guy, but you know, he's nowhere to be found in this series. So there's plenty of blame to go around. I guess before I get to the blame, let's give the Lakers credit, right? And I, I see Laker fans. Uh, circling back to my videos and talking about excuses and ha ha. Listen, your the prestige of your franchise, along with LeBron, has certainly helped you out along the way here. But y'all look good, man. Y'all deserve to win that game. You should feel good about all these guys chipping in and where y'all are at. It, it, you, the, you look like the better team. There's no doubt about it. And the series says as much. It's 3-1, right? So credit to the Lakers. I, I can't complain about the refereeing in this one, right? It, this was this this was an uh, a fair game. Now, there was a couple moving screen calls late, but that's going to happen, right? And, and, and like Kerr said, credit y'all's gamesmanship. But let's talk about this fourth quarter, right? Because so many times this season, that's where it's unraveled. And we saw it yet again. And um, there is this... People want to blame, right? There's plenty of blame to go around. Steve Kerr deserves plenty of blame, right? But understand also that part of Kerr's job is to take the blame. And what he is saying to the media post game is not what's being said behind closed doors, right? Part of his duty is to kind of shield these guys and take the blame. I understand that. But where I thought the mistake happened strategically, and this is kind of on Kerr and his staff, was the submissive switching late on LeBron James. You saw LeBron seek out Steph and hunt him relentlessly in that fourth quarter. Now, this may be easier said than done, but in my eyes, I, I think you can let Wiggins fight through that. It's not like LeBron is coming off the screen hard, turning the corner and attacking quick pull-ups, right? It's not Dame Lillard where you, you have to switch it. Otherwise, he's going to make you pay right away. It was at such a slow pace. Unless Anthony Davis was the screener and you were worried about him as a lob threat, I don't think they needed to submissively switch Steph onto LeBron every time down the floor. I thought that that was a mistake that the staff and the strategy of uh, in that fourth quarter. And then the Lonnie Walker thing. The Lonnie Walker thing is crazy, right? There's nothing, it's just, it's nuts, man. I, I, I thought he might get involved in the series, but the confidence in LeBron to let him do that was wild, right? That was, and you saw like the very first possession of the fourth quarter, he comes in and sets the screen on, Wiggins and both Steph and Wiggins kind of go to LeBron, right? And they knew it. If you watch LeBron's body language, he knew the whole time. I'm just going to flick it back. Walker, you confidently step into that three ball. It's like, okay, bet. Like that was cool. But I thought the Warriors, again, maybe a misstep in strategy was kind of like, dude, there's no way this kid is going to stay this hot in this moment on this stage. And so they left Steph on him and kind of, I thought it was maybe to bait him to keep shooting. But I don't got to tell you, he kept shooting and he kept making it, right? Now, let's talk about the late game stuff in, in the drawing up. That's another place where, you know, the, the so first off, the turnover from Draymond, right? The fake handoff. 
I think you have to understand if you're the Warriors, if you're Kerr and this staff, a LeBron-led team is not falling for the fake Draymond handoff. Not in that moment. Maybe, maybe coming out of a timeout in the second quarter. Not on like a final possession of a game, right? And then Draymond, it, it seemed like he was sped up. It, it like, it like he almost felt like there was only five or six seconds when there was really 15 seconds on the clock, right? Walker comes down, hits free throws. The kid was cold, man. The kid, I, I, you got to give him credit. He, he he hits two free throws, so now it's a three-point game. And Draymond, offensive rebound, tap from Wiggins. Steph, and, Steph gets to switch on AD, and Steph was cooked at the end of the game. There's no doubt about it. I know everybody's screaming pick and roll, pick and roll, but there's a cost to that, and, it, and he didn't get enough help. Steph played unbelievably, but you could see his legs were cooked at the end of this. And so he kind of settled and Draymond gets that big rebound and doesn't even look at the rim, right? Doesn't even look at the rim. I know I've been negative or I'm thought of as negative and I'm, and people call me a hater when I point out things about the Warriors. And it's funny though, because a lot of those same people are going to, you know, place all this blame on these guys, right? This core three. Draymond has won four rings playing that way, right? So yeah, in the moment, you're like, dude, Draymond, you could have just turned over Schroeder and just put it in. I think it would have been, I think it was a one point game at that point, right? It would have, it would have given us a one point lead possibly. I'm a little mixed up, but uh, I understand saying that in a vacuum. But when you think about who these players are, right? They've won playing this way. And so ultimately they're going to lose playing that way, right? They're going to go out on their sword that way. And that brings me to Clay Thompson, right? Because, yeah, those two shots, you could see he was thirsty and he was frustrated because he hadn't got enough uh, touches throughout the game. A symptom of all that pick and roll action, right? But here's the truth. You go back to the original game six Clay, down 3-1 against Oklahoma City in 2016. Those are the same shots. Those are the, those two terrible shots he took those in that game six and he made them. So that's kind of what Kerr was alluding to after the game. Like that's who Clay is. That's who Clay is. It, it, y- y- y'all are MMA fans, UFC. You remember Chuck Liddell? You remember how glorious his run was at the top, right? But you ultimately knew it was only going to end one way for Chuck, right? He was going to go out throwing haymakers. Clay is going to go out throwing haymakers. The Warriors are going to go out living by the three ball. Right. And then the irony, the game ends on a turnover. Very frustrating, man. Very frustrating. And so here we sit three, one. And, you know, the the people I picked the Lakers in six. Right. And some people were like, oh, the alchemy jinx. I'm doing this on purpose. So, so no, I like, again, I always tell y'all how I'm feeling in the moment. Right. And, and, and I'm not afraid to be wrong. I may switch it up. Like you saw in the first sec in the Sacramento series, I took warriors in seven. But headed into that game seven, I was like, dude, I think we spent too much gas getting here. We're on the road. I don't think we're going to get it, right? I don't don't want to be right or wrong. I'm just telling you what I think. We're just having a conversation, right? And so, yeah, I picked the Lakers in six, to be honest. I think we've what's been frustrating is it's been closer than I thought. I I didn't, if, if those of you that follow me closely, patrons and people that, you know, listen to all my takes know for... You know, over a month, I've been like, dude, we don't, I don't want any part of the Lakers. Like as 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 the the play in and stuff started to play out, I was like, dude, I don't want any part of this team, right? And so you know, I've been consistent with that. And I guess the frustrating thing is watching it play out. And when you consider all like the turbulence of this season, it's kind of remarkable that it's been this close. Like this could be easily two two. We could, I mean, it could be three one us. We could make that argument. I mean, it it, it it's been frustrating, but here we sit. Down 3-1. Uh, have all the adjustments been made? Right? You know, it, the, obviously the Warriors, it, it's this, it's it's simple yet so complicated. It's just been this cat and mouse game of how do they get AD out of the paint and into these screen actions. And they keep switching it around, discouraging it. This LeBron on Draymond thing. Um, does Steph figure out a way to attack LeBron better, right? He just, it, it, you could see the familiarity in that matchup. So I don't know how many uh, strict strategy moves there are. Does Kerr go back to Looney? Is Looney healthy, right? There's just been so many things. I don't know how much more adjustments there are to be made at this point in game five. However, to sit here and say that 
I'm going to bet against the championship pedigree of the Warriors at home in an elimination game, I'd be silly, right? I'd be silly to say that. And so as frustrating as this loss is and as bad as, as down bad as we are right now, you got to think they're going to get this game five at home. And it just goes into that cliche of one game at a time, right? Like everybody has remained healthy for this series. Is everybody healthy exiting game five? If you've been watching these playoffs long enough, you know how quickly one game can alter the the landscape of the entire playoffs at this point. And so, yeah, they've got to just focus on that one game. Uh, again, I don't know what the strategy is. You just, I just, you think that the desperation of this team, the pride of this team, Clay, uh, an opportunity to bounce back here. Jordan Poole, is he fully benched? I guess that's the last subject. I wasn't even going to speak on it until the off season. I wasn't, but I know. Y'all going to be in the comments right now like, what about Pool? What about Pool? I tried to warn you about J.P. Munch, fam. I tried to tell y'all. No, listen, go back in my channel and look. Months ago, I was like, hey, is is uh, is the pool party over? Like, is, is this this? And I've tried to remain objective and patient with the kid, but it seems like we're in the midst, midst of a, a full meltdown from him. And... We'll have time in this offseason to talk about what that means going forward. But I don't think as much as people want to blame Steve Kerr right now for all the problems, I don't think anybody blamed him for sitting him, you know, pretty much the entire second half. He had a small stint of minutes. Do they give him an opportunity in game five to redeem himself or do they pull the plug? Because Moody, you know, has his limitations, but he's been better than Poole. He's been better than Poole. He gives a size rebounding, can still spread the floor. He's not the ball handler. But I guess that's my question into this game five as far as the rotations. Do they stick with GP2? Is he healthy enough? He's got to get fluids in him, bro. Home cooking, brother. The rest of the series, the rest of the playoffs. Damn. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts as we sit here down 3-1. Again, hats off to the Lakers. They've played really well. It's been a different guy every game stepping up. Their depth has shown up. That was my concern moving into this series. And it's played out that way. But it ain't over till the fat lady sings, right? Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.